Alright guys, welcome to part 2 on the 1980 Kawasaki KDX175. As you guys know, last video we picked this thing up for, what was it, $600. We found out that there was a huge mouse nest in the side cover over here, right here where the air filter is supposed to be. And uh, when the guy started it up, when he showed it to me, it sucked in all that nest into the cylinder here and uh, down into the crank. So the crank was stuck, so we cleaned it all out and um, everything was good to go. We put it back together and did the first startup last video. Um, we found out also that the carburetor slide is the wrong carburetor slide for this machine, which is really weird. So the slide has a cutout groove, um, which is supposed to be on this side, but it's actually on this side, so it's not idling properly because of that. I found one on eBay. Uh, it was like 60 bucks. I'm like, ah, I don't know if I can buy that, but I actually know the people. So we're going to see if I can get the price down a little bit lower. Um, we've got to fix the chain. The chain is really, really messed up on this thing. You can see it goes up over <laughs> that thing right there and then downward angle. <laughs> it's supposed to go on this chain guide right here. So somebody really messed that up. Then we've got to do the oil change. Last video we looked at the oil. And the oil is really, really bad in this. It's mixed with a ton of gas, it looks like. Let's see here. Yeah, it's like all brown and milky in there. You can see it's even bubbling. So we gotta do that today as well. What does this thing take? Only 0.55 liters. Barely any oil. So... Let's get going on that, and hopefully we can take this thing for a rip today. All right, we're leaning this against the side of the garage to do the oil change, because all I have is the center stand. Uh, it does have a kickstand, but like I said before, that weld is pretty weak, and I don't want to rip it off further. So there's a skid plate under here. We gotta get those bolts off. So let's do that first. Are you guys ready to see this oil? Let's wait until you see this. Now that is some bad oil. Yikes. Just a tad rough. <laughs> Not good at all. It's pretty bad. All right, we'll let that drain for a bit and then come back, add some fresh oil to it because it definitely needs it. All right, 0.55 liters going in. It's about 0.6 quarts. Runs pretty good. All right, next step. Let's see, what can we do? Probably the chain. I 
get this off of here. Ouch. Looks like the clip is back here. The master link is back here. All right, check the rear bearings here. Now the chain's off. Feels pretty good. No wobble. Chain's got a lot of slack now that we got that off. Um, might have to cut out a few links. Possibly. We will see. Might be able to adjust the wheel back further. All right, chain is all adjusted. Two fingers underneath there. Should be good to go. Just have to put that master link back on, and we're all set. Then the next step is to get this foot peg back on. See if we can get this back into place. That looks pretty good. All right, that's fixed in there. So what I had to do was use a bolt like, let's see if I can find it, like that. Or it's got a really flat head on it. Otherwise, that chain would have been hitting that right there. So I tried to use a normal, you know, just hex head like that and it did not work. So we got her figured out. That's not going anywhere. Nice and tight on there. So that was the only way to do that. I think that's like that because the sprocket's so big in the back. I don't think it's supposed to be that big. And usually the chain would sit up like right here. And that bolt would clear that. So but anyway, we got that fixed. Um, let's uh, check compression next. See what our plug looks like here. Still white. We probably haven't ran it enough to uh, change that color. You can see it's turning black a little bit, but nothing crazy. All right, we're shooting for like 120. I guess anything over 100 is pretty good for an old bike, but I'd like to see 120 on here. Let's see what we get right there. We're gonna do throttle open. Oh yeah, 150. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, that's pretty good. I'll take that. Not too bad. All right, we've got great compression. One more thing before we take this thing for a ride. I want to get a silencer on here. I cannot find one for sale. Um, they're very hard to find. So I think I've got one that might work. I'm gonna go look up in my parts bins up here 
and see if I can go find one because I used to have a KX250, an old one. All right, so this is the silencer I have. Um, it may or may not work, I'm not too sure. If we can get it bolted up like that. Might possibly work, we'll see. All right, pipe is on there. Put a little uh, O-ring between here to dampen the noise. I don't have any other rubber pieces, but it's on there pretty good. We'll see if that works. We'll start her up and see what she sounds like. Hopefully it dampens that noise. I mean, it was really loud without it, so. I'd say that's working, that's a lot quieter. Definitely a lot quieter. So I'd say that's a win. We're going to get some of these stickers off the bike. I like these, we're gonna keep those on there. I think those are original. And then this one off the tank too. Just to make it look a little bit better. I've got the pressure washer here. We can maybe pressure wash it after that. Um, or I might do it at my parents' house. like sticky stuff on there. All right, got that off with an SOS pad. A little brake cleaner on the tank. Clean it up a little bit. Alright, it's cleaned up a little bit. Shined it up with some uh, WD-40. Got that sticker off the tank. But yeah, it's not looking too bad. Still have to uh, pressure wash it. Make it look a lot better. Get the engine all done and everything. But plastics, I went over with some um, brake cleaner. That gets all the grease off and then I went over with WD-40 to shine it up. Same with the seat. Looking a little bit better. Um, these handlebars need to come up a little bit, They're kind of bent forward, so let's get those up a bit and then really we should probably replace them. But Once we get to my parents, I've got my welder out there, we're going to try to weld this kickstand up and then paint that. But I think we're now going to quick test this out to make sure it moves um, before we get out there and start riding. I think the clutch plates are stuck right now. so. Probably have to warm it up for a while and then um, maybe ride around for a little bit before that clutch disengages because I think it's pretty much stuck right now.
All right, uh, first ride. Um, obviously the clutch is not working. So we're gonna take it out to my parents, rip some trails, take her on the road, see what she can do. Hopefully that clutch frees up. If not, we can take off the clutch case cover and uh, probably have to rip apart those, those clutch plates. But we'll let the oil warm up and see if that works. But uh, let's head out to my parents and go rip this thing. All right, we're all prepped for welding. You can see the previous owner's job wasn't the greatest. And then back here, you can see I got all that back down to the metal. So we're gonna weld a gap right in there because I think that's where it broke. So right there, we're just gonna weld a nice bead all the way down. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but uh, we made it out to my parents' house, so we're gonna go rip around in a little bit. All right, all repaired. Things pretty strong now. Shouldn't go anywhere. So, I think that's fixed. I ran out of welding wire. I had like one more little crack right there I wanted to weld, but could not get to it. All right, kickstand's back on. Let's see if she works. All right, let's see what happens here. Hey, it works. It's tilting quite a bit over, but I guess that's just how it is. Well, that's fixed. Let's take this thing for rip. All right, here we go, first ride on the 1980 KDX 175. Take a quick peek at it. It's a pretty sweet looking bike. Look at that beast. All right, first ride, let's see what she does. Gotta let her warm up for a little bit here. All right, let's see, turn on the gas. Gas is on. Kick her over a couple times. Whoa. She's a little smoky. Make sure the choke is off here. Yep, choke is off. Alright, here we go. There we go, oh, baby. Make it through here. Ah. There we go, it's opening up a little bit now. I'm trying to make this clutch work here. I got the clutch kind of working. Just a little bit better than before. Let's see here. I 
goes pretty good. Let's see if we can get into neutral here. I think my uh, lever's stripping out right here. Take her on the road here. Sounds pretty lean. She was sounding pretty lean on that run. We're leaking some oil. Oh, that must just be from the chain, I think. Unless there's like an automatic oiler or something. But leaking a little bit right there. I don't know what that's from. I'm guessing the slide in the carburetor is causing it to do that. It's really weird acting. You hear how boggy it is. choke on for a little bit see what happens <laughs> maybe it's just running lean <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like the choke <laughs> Ooh, backfire there <laughs> see if the clutch works oh yeah baby the clutch works through there what are they doing back here big crane back here looks like they might be digging out the ditches or something not too sure huh you can hear the bike runs pretty good but I think it's just the slide that's causing issues you can hear it uh, rev out all the way but it takes a little bit and I think it might be the slide but otherwise it's it's going pretty good it's not too bad the clutch works now and this is working so we'll see if she starts back up here <laughs> As soon as I let off the clutch, it just dies. That's really weird. Yeah, we gotta fix that slide. I think that's the problem. Cause right when I let off that, that clutch, it just dies. All right, let's try starting her up again. Yeah, that shifter is getting stripped out. Let's see if we can make it back home. <laughs> Run 
runs better than I thought it would. All right, so the shifter keeps on getting stripped out. I don't know how. Must just be too much oil in there. So I'm gonna take that off, clean it out, reinstall that, and see if we can get those teeth to grab. I don't know if it's the, the shift shaft or the actual shifter getting stripped out. All right, so it definitely looks like the shifter is stripped out and not the shaft. You can see there's those teeth are all stripped in there. These aren't too bad. I mean, they're not the greatest in the world, but I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So we're gonna try to reinstall this. See if we can get it to grab a little bit better. All right, let's see if the shifter's fixed. Hopefully. So far, so good. First ride on it, not too bad. Obviously it won't idle because of that slide that's incorrect in there. We gotta get a new slide for it, we've got that on the way. So once we get that, we can really rip it around the trails. Uh, sound pretty good, the clutch is slipping a bit, I can tell. So maybe we can take up that side cover and uh, take apart the clutch plates because I'm guessing some of them are stuck together. Let's see how the oil is holding up. Let's see if there's any gas in there. Nope, looking good. So that carburetor is working now. Not leaking gas. Everything's working great. Starts easily. 150 pounds of compression. So really, it's just that slide we're waiting for. Once we get that, this thing will be all perfect. Oh, and then I'll be looking for a silencer in the meantime. And then some lights for it and stuff. It'll be looking pretty cool. Not too bad for 600 bucks. Anyway well, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for the next video on this. And until next time, we are out.